as a local lad to be sprung into this world famous institution and suddenly you're, you're, you're fighting for titles and FA Cups and ultimately Champions League. Yeah, well first of all we all want to be Chucky's boot boy. <laughs> Chucky was the only one that gave out a tip at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't me. I ended up being Eric Cantona, and he didn't say much, but uh, he, um, his boots were always clean. I hope that dispels the uh, rumours of the Scottish people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I obviously came in at the, when the club was very matured by what the managers built and coming at a very, a very nice time. I mean, I was nervous as, as, as shit coming in, if I'm being quite honest. 17, I started training with the first team, still at the cliff. Um, and if I'm being honest, that first Christmas do was probably the worst Christmas do I've ever had, because I wasn't allowed to drink when I was growing up every month. So you can imagine Pally and the boys saying, right, where's I going down to the pub? And after my first pint, I thought, that was it, it's time to go home. I fell off my chair, the lads have to put me in a taxi. Um, <laughs> it's a true story, that. I say what happened after that, but it's three months down the line. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a good time to come in, and it obviously was that first year was um, the Champions Champions League win the treble. And um, when I look back, probably my my favourite year um, on on how it felt and the way the lads were and the, the team the manager built. Ultimately, it would never be the same again because you can never get to that high again, regardless whatever you win. So. Uh, you know, I know we've won many titles, FA Cups, Carling Cups, and another Champions League, but I've never actually got back to that same feeling as, as a winner. Really? Well, how can you? Well, I understand that, but I just thought you're not disrespecting your role in that season, but your role was much more significant in 2008. I understand that, but I, I, you, were, you wasn't at the party in 99, was you? I tried to get in. I tried to get in. Simon, the bond company didn't get in that night, did it? No, but no, I agree because I remember asking Gary Neville after, after that uh, after that season. I said to him, Gary, and he said, "We've got to believe we can do that again." But it's shown now that despite the media building every team up, no English team has achieved what we did in '99, have they? No, not at all. And, and yes, we were shit in the final, and we, we got lucky near the end. But you know, there was still a spirit there. Um, you know, the, the rules were a little bit different, the subs were different, so it was a, a difficult challenge. When you look back now, after retiring, because um, at the time you think, yeah, you can do that again, yeah, we can do that. But believe me, it's, it's not as simple as that. Do you wish that you got the photograph with Maisie a bit more at the end? Well, after that, I was like, Maisie, you don't even play. He's like, where's well, get in the middle, son, get in the middle. <laughs> so, Brian, without Nick being too stereotypical, what was the, we had, we had some great times, the FA Cup in 90, Rotterdam, the league in 93, but what was the ultimate ice on the cake for you in terms of, you just said you wanted to win trophies, what was the ultimate one at United for you? Um, nothing to do with the trophies, it was uh, getting told you were coming back for pre-season, that was fine, I mean, like, it was, I never knew, none of us knew, whether we were going to be irrespective of whether we won something or not. You know, when you got that you know, piece of information to say we report back to training on the, the 13th of July, that was the best thing that could happen to me. You know, I managed to get um, 11 of those, so uh, that was more than, and then, then along the way, and then there's like, where's your senses there? That you tend to think about the parties more than the, in the actual occasion of winning the game. And in 1991, that was one hell of a party. Was this 91 in Rotterdam? And, uh, do you want to elaborate, Brian, about the party and about you and a certain leader, a certain captain, who I believe you stayed up later than most people at night? Uh, Rob and I were the last to go to bed at five in the morning. And then. Um, for some bizarre reason, I asked for an alarm call at uh, half past six. <laughs> and uh, I woke up, no idea what it was. Um, what's going on here? Why is the phone ringing? And so I, I got two calls, is what I thought. I can get off now. Came downstairs, and I came downstairs at the same time as uh, Robo. And it came down with my 
my guest, you, you'd have a guest at that time. Um, you probably have like four or five guests. Oh, well, 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 and uh, my missus couldn't go because I'd just given birth a couple of weeks before, so I took my mate along. And he got up as well at uh, half past six when I went down for breakfast. And then at the same time as we all home, we sat down, a bit really fancy, you know, a pancakes or a bit of bacon or some eggs or whatever, a cup of coffee. Oh, uh, shout to the guy over there and come over. Uh, we had the hotel to ourselves, there was no other people there. Uh, champagne. 